So with that, I'd like to invite Jeffrey onto the stage and uh, regale us with, uh, with his story. I'm thrilled to have you here, Jeffrey. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, Thanks a lot. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, make sure that we got, uh, yeah, I know that guy. Yeah, I, I've, I've met him. Okay. Uh, okay, there we go. Okay, so, so um, we have about 50 minutes, and, and Frank kind of set the bar where we want to set it, which is get past the, the easy things to say and get at some of the, some of the sort of cutting edge uh, issues that we're all confronting in the room. My job in that role is to put in place some framework. Um, whenever things happen in IT that change pretty dramatically and the, all the pieces get moved on, on the board, the first job is to sort of do a situation analysis and sort of pull back and figure out where the hell are we? and then potentially from there say, okay, now how are we gonna take action? And in this case, as you saw from the whole keynote this morning, it's, it's a highly negotiated thing. The, arguably, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, we could have kept that within the IT community. It's pretty clear from the challenge that ServiceNow and, and the world is putting in front of the, uh, the CIO right now, this is a negotiated settlement across the entire executive team. And the problem with that is the executive team doesn't have a lot of vocabulary for understanding IT. And so what I want to talk a little bit, I want to contextualize that uh, for you and, 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 so, and then create an opportunity to sort of say so in this context. What kind of a conversation are we having with our colleagues and where can it go? And just to, to put it in perspective, this is the big thing that everybody sees. I mean, we, we kind of get that the world has changed in ways that they just fundamentally rewrite the rule book. So you'd look at this thing and you'd say, well, if I were born at the age of, you know, if I was born in, let's see, say 1994, this would be the world and I wouldn't be thinking about any legacy. I would just say, how do you design forward from this world? But that's not the world that we live in in this room. So we look at this and we say, okay, I want this. This is the, this is the future, I got it. I, I understand these things, but I need to put it in context. And so the context in this room, in my case, I've been involved with IT for four decades. And each decade has had a big theme. So the, the, the 80s was all about re-engineering knowledge work. We, we brought the personal computer into the game. We brought the, the local area network into the game. And it was largely about you know, office automation and, and, and knowledge work changed. So all of a sudden it became actually kind of fun to be a knowledge worker. Uh, productivity actually didn't change. There was an article in about 1990 that was like, we've spent all this money on personal computing. Is, is anybody getting a return on innovation? Or, you know, on investment? And the answer was, well, yeah, you, you, you know, mumble, 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 so which is, is short for no. But the next, de the next decade, we bolted that infrastructure onto the back office. We were able to finally standardize at the edge around Windows. We were able to create a client server architecture. So now all of a sudden we could, we could get back office information, information to the front, front to the back. We created ERP, we created CRM, we created SCM. We were able to move masses, um, a massive amount of work out of the developed economies into the developing economies. We fundamentally re-engineered the economy of the world very much for the better, a little bit challenging for us in this decade in the developed economy, but from the point of view of the world and China and India, it's just unbelievable accomplishment and a huge, huge, huge productivity boost for the world, largely attributable to IT. And at the combined theme of those two decades, we would now call systems of record, taking systems of record out of the mainframe and putting them at work in the world to create the global economy, huge accomplishment. At the end of that decade, Y2K, we just did it one more time, right? What the hell? And at that point, I think there was a large digestive burp and enterprise IT kind of went on hold. It's like, I don't, we can't eat anymore. And by the way, I think we should start, we should start going on a diet, in fact. Meanwhile, so enterprise IT goes on hold. Venture actually gets enamored of biotech. It gets enamored of clean tech because it's pretty sure that enterprise tech is gone. And then all of a sudden it's like, hang on, consumer IT. So out of, uh, fundamentally for somebody who was raised in the IT thing, consumer IT came out of nowhere for, for my, from my experience base because IT had always started in the enterprise and gone to the consumer. It was like, no, this is a completely different model. This is the SMAC model. And the impact and the importance of this decade is two things, and, and, and Frank talked about both of them, I think, in, in his keynote. But one is or, uh, uh, the fellow who's got the wonderful spiky hair. Is it Rob? Rob. So, so, so I mean, really, I just wish I could look that. If I could just like spike it up a little, I think I'd be 20 years younger. Uh, <laughs> But, 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 
Uh, but you look at that and, and you go, look, it's, a, it's now a, a world, it's a different experience. And if you have children or grandchildren that are they're young, you kind of see digital, it, it isn't technology, it's, it's their life. I mean, it's, it, there isn't like, I have, my digital, I have my digital life and my analog life, it's no, no. This is my life. And the little kid does this on the magazine and the picture doesn't move be, because this is the world. So important number one is the interface is now established. This is the interface. Benioff's smartest things is when he said, I designed Salesforce to copy Amazon and I designed Chatter to copy Facebook because you don't RFT, RTFM, right? I mean, basically the manual is already out there. They know how to use it. Just don't change it and, and you're square. So all of that's there and we have to, that's a new bar. But, but the other thing is it's, it's fundamentally changed the way we interact with each other. And so what's interesting, the opportunity of this decade is, can we do it again? We did it in the 90s. We were able to take an, an, a, a, a user-centric infrastructure and bring it into the enterprise. Can we do it again? And obviously our colleagues are saying, you have to do it again. We, you have to do this. This is the way we work. This is the way things are. But, uh, but this is a very, very different world. And this is a world where we talk about systems of engagement. And it's very, uh, the, the, part, the rest of this talk is just gonna talk about the tension that's created between systems of record and systems of engagement because everybody in this room has 100% responsibility for both. And the expectation of your firm is that you will be able to do with the mobile tablet world what we were able to do with the PC world, despite the fact that it is not centered around a single vendor. There's, I mean, there's a whole lot of reasons why this is a lot harder, not to mention the fact that there are a whole lot of bad guys out there looking to exploit vulnerabilities as we're in the middle of doing this. So lo lots of reasons to make it hard. Three things that I think fundamentally sort of ex capture the tension that I'm talking about. So systems of record are transactional, and, and we understand transactions. We, we, we OLTP, faster, 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 got it, that's good. Self-service transactions are even better. But systems of engagement are behavioral. I don't have a lot of behavioral people on my team. You know, I've got a lot of transaction people on my team. You know? Not so much, the behavioral thing, I'm mm, not sure where that came in the computer science uh, curriculum. So I'm feeling a little, the focus thing is making me a little nervous. Behavioral feels more like those people in marketing. Uh, never trusted them, uh, but transaction feels, you know, finance, I mean, where are my finance people? I have finance people I like. So, we're, that, so I have that in part of my head. Then I go to structure, and the key thing about a systems of record is, is it's organized around the data. You, me, we, you remember we, we start with a schema, and, and we draw the schema, and we draw the little soup cans for the databases, and with the little, you know, the little jaggedy arrows in Gazinta and Gazauta, and, and, and we design a system of record. And the system is in service to the data, including every person that deals with that system is in service to the, to the data. And when there's an error, it was the person's fault, right? In that, in that world, so you, you made an error. Systems of engagement are the exact opposite. Systems of engagement are organized around user experiences. Man, I mean, who in my IT group is my user experience person? Now, I don't know, are there people, do you have somebody, how many people here have somebody in your team whose, li whose job is user experience design? Okay, okay, so see, it, yeah, okay, so we're good. It, it, it's, and by the way, in the Valley Design School, the DSUL at Stanford, there's a bunch of cool things going on around that. But, but that's, it's, you know, if I said two people, <laughs> How many hands would go down? And if I said three people, you know, at some point it's like, uh, of my four, 350 people. So, so that, that one's certainly, you know, a, a tension. And then this third thing about just the value system. I mean, look, if I'm on the audit committee of a public company, secure and accurate, those are very important words to keep me out of an orange jumpsuit, right? So, I mean, look, the, the, our IT person is, 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 is up against that, even though I'm su suggesting we'd be innovative with IT at the same time. Charming and easy to use? That was not exactly the phrases that leapt to mind with SAP and Oracle. I mean, just, you know, that real secure and accurate. Yeah, those were the good ones, right? So if you look at this and you say, what is actually going on and how is this stress playing out? And, and how are we experiencing it as, as, as an industry? We look at this thing, we say, okay, this is the stack. Let's call this the client server stack. This is something we built largely in the 90s. And we, we said at the top of the thing, there's gonna be a bunch of stuff that the users will experience. 
the middle is a bunch of stuff that kind of makes the stuff work. The stuff at the bottom is the stuff that's run by electrons. And if you look at this stack, most of us in this room, the, the size of the companies represented in this room, we are heavily invested in this stack, deeply invested, have been for decades. Our core systems of record live here. And what's happened in the, in the 21st century, in the 20th century, the companies on the right were hyper growth companies. They were the leading large cap tech companies uh, of that decade. Since 2000, these stocks have all basically been flat because what's happened was the business community said, look, enough's enough. We're, never, we're not gonna divorce these people, but we're not gonna invest in, it, it, this is not where we wanna spend more money in the future. That thing, I, that little quote on the, on the video at the, at, at the thing, you know, we've gotten most of the lifetime value from these systems, so let's consolidate, let's do it right, let, you know, let's make sure that we stick together. I'm, you know, I'm paying you some money, but it's money that you're extracting from your colleagues, and frankly, your colleagues are looking at you with this group of people saying, I think every year you should squeeze this a little bit more out. So like two, three, four, five percent cost reduction per year, say for till the end of time. Would that, would that work for you, right? <laughs> so, so, but, that, but that's kind of what, what they have in mind. So you look at that and you go, okay, that's part of my job. You, you, you don't get to divorce yourself from that job. But what's happening is this stack is morphing, meaning at every level of the stack, something new is coming not to displace, but to counterbalance or to compete for attention with. So is business process consulting gonna go away? Of course not. But the new hot thing is user experience design. So you know we used to have business analysts, we still have business analysts, but now we have these user design experience. Okay, well that's, that's pretty new. So desktop computing, nobody's throwing away their desktops, but we know that all of the growth is in mobile. It's in tablets and it's, it's, it's in the smartphone. We got that. Okay, so mobile, okay, I, I can do this. You know, on-premise apps, my financials, whatever, I mean, whatever, whatever legacy ERP system, it's probably not going anywhere soon, but we know it's a SaaS world. And at the margin, every time you would bring an on-premise app in in the future, you'd feel like, man, Am I, is this really what I should be doing? Shouldn't I be trying to find a way to do this with SaaS? Business intelligence, great. You know, trying to make executives smart, it, it's, it's work, but you know, but it's, you know, it pays. But the truth of the matter is the hot stuff is not people. The hot stuff is analytics and machine learning. So all those processes where basically we're gonna help computer people make better decisions, Frank said it, or, or Rob said it right. You put a person in the middle, you slow things down or you dumb things down or both, right? But, but the truth is that's not completely fair. There are places, machine learning does not have judgment. There are places, but, but, but now we're, 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 again, we're trying to maintain, so if I have a dollar, do I put it into business intelligence or do I put it into analytics and machine learning? Do I put it into enterprise document management because I still have all that stuff or do I put it into some kind of collaborative content management, sort of box, drop boxy kind of stuff? It just keeps going. So the web application stuff, great, but now, all the mobile app stuff, and particularly with all, this, all the heart bleed kind of things that are going on. So again, enterprise directory, great, except in this new economy, many of the people I need to interact with aren't in my company. So I need to have some sort of identity management that goes beyond the enterprise. Well, how do I do that, right? And, 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 and systems management, internal stuff for efficiency, still there, but this huge anxiety now around security management. And how much money should I be putting into that? And, and database management, which is kind of, which kind of the anchor tenant of this entire stack. The relational database was sort of the, the hub of this whole world. Well, now it's saying, yeah, but m most of the data at the margin that my colleagues are now interested in isn't in our database. It's not, or it's, it's either in log files, or it's in this data a cloud halo or da digital exhaust or whatever you want to call this stuff, but it's not in a relational database. Okay, so, but I still have relational databases and mainframe servers and storage, yes, uh, but, but increasingly now, can I get that through cloud infrastructure and wireline ne networks, God bless, but wireless networks and software defined networks, kind of where it's going, and high performance microprocessors, sure, but now all the low power stuff. So, so you go, holy crap. I mean, it, that's a lot of cheese to move. Like, it, it just, I mean, you know, it, it, and so, so you look at that and you go, okay, that's the world, we, we kind of, carve it up into infrastructure as a service at the bottom, 
And by the way, I think most people at the margin have made their peace with infrastructure as a service. You know, I mean, yes, but at, on the whole, I think people are going, that one feels like that's getting solved. At the top, we're talking about software as a service. I have to say, you know, God bless, you know, Salesforce and Neil and Mark and all these people. This thing is, the, the, this is also getting a lot of excitement, although it's, it's newer. I would say that the stuff that's furthest across the adoption lifecycle is the stuff that really just says, take your old on-premise system and replace it with a SaaS version of the same. The classic thing with new technology, the first thing you do with it is you make old stuff work better. And then the next thing you do with it is do stuff you've never done before. So I think some of the other stuff here, like, uh, like uh, analytics and machine learning, that's stuff we've never done before. That's still, I think, crossing the chasm. There's still a lot of competitive advantage uh, to be done. You, you look at what Amazon does, you look at what Google does, you look at what Facebook does, you look at what LinkedIn's doing, you look at what Uber can do, you look at what Airbnb can do. This stuff is really, it's, it is lightning in a bottle. And, and, and it doesn't hit every industry all at once, but you can kind of see how it will uh, uh, going forward. So that was pretty cool. The place where I think there's a lot of actual anxiety, we call this platform as a service. I think, I think, I don't know what we thought platform as a service was, but for the first 10 years, whatever it was we thought it was, it was not that. Uh, but I think what it's going to emerge to be is some form of cartilage. And, and I think right now, if you, look, if you look at this world right now and who's here, this is a lot of emerging leaders. And I put service now, when I did this presentation, in the top layer. I think there's a part of service now that also may be in the middle layer. What we're trying to do in the middle layer is figure out what kind of a fabric can allow freedom for systems of engagement, allow human beings to have behavioral experiences that interact with systems of record which need to have highly controlled experiences. And so this notion of kind of, kind of where, and, and the other thing is, you know, well, you know, we used to say nobody ever got fired for buying IBM or Cisco or Microsoft. You look at that list, you say, I think I could still get fired for buying some of those people. You know what I mean? I mean, some of those people may not be in the business. You know, I don't know. So, so, so it, it's, it's new. And, and, and I, uh, the reason I want to put this on the table is, it is clear, when we look at, at where the money wants to go, the money does want to go, oh, I'm sorry, well, okay. So, so uh, actually, could you go back one, please? Just for a second. Uh, is anybody back there? Oh, yeah, thank you, good. Okay, so, so I think the money wants to go here. I think, I think at the margin, the, 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 because, because the lifetime value of what we think we can get from all this stuff, we're probably at three or four or five percent. I mean, unless you're in a remarkable company, I can't imagine that you've gotten even close to 10% of the lifetime value of what you're going to get when this stuff finally all deploys at scale. Whereas I think most of the companies in this room have probably gotten close to 90% of the lifetime value out of the, the blue stack, okay? So, 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 so we want to do this, but, but, you know, large corporations, global corporations, some of these companies you know, don't realize there is a country other than the United States, you know, where, 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 where we do do business. So it, it, it can be a challenge. Okay, so underneath that, so, so let, let's suppose we start to make our peace with that thing. We have to sort of rewire our brains. And this is, at my age, by the way, this gets harder and harder. Um, but young people will, are continually working on my brain as hard as they can. Uh, and it's, 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 it's a work in progress. But, but here's, what, here's one of the things we've learned, I've learned. So in the new smack world, at the edge, it's mobile and social, and at the core, it's analytics and cloud. And mobile is really, it, it came to the fruition out of communication, so we got communication. And social really is about collaboration. Say, okay, yeah, I got that. And cloud's about computing, yep. And analytics is about creating. Well, that one I think people are still saying, I'm, I'm not sure, but you know, Deep Blue did beat Gary Kasparov. So at some point you have to acknowledge that there's some creative intelligence here somewhere. But here's the big deal. The world in which uh, uh, the, 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 the systems of record uh, generation grew up in, in the, with the PC and the whole, the whole client server world, you started with a computer. And so the first thing you did was you computed and you created things. You created documents, you created spreadsheets, you created presentations. You computed to create, and then you used the spreadsheets and the documents and the presentations to communicate. And at the margin, you would collaborate. 
But to be fair, in a command and control world and in a competition-oriented individual performance objectives world, collaboration is not, is not where you start. And my generation did not start with collaboration. When I went to school, collaboration was called cheating. Okay? <laughs> and you were expelled for collaborating. No, you, seriously, you would be expelled from my school for collaborating. So we did, collaboration did not come naturally to, the, to, to me, right? So you look at my kids' generation, or, or, or beyond that, first of all, it's, it starts with communicate. That, that's the fundamental experience of digital, is I'm communicating. And very quickly, I'm communicating to collaborate. So the whole social network experience. And by the way, when they go to school, that's how they went to school. They didn't sit at a desk with keep your eyes on your own desk. They sat at a table with three other kids. And they shared. Just share, shared? Yes, yeah, shared, shared. Shared and like. The two words we never used when I went to school. No, but so, so, so they're working at it. So communicate, collaborate, then maybe compute, and then create at the end. Well, that's just a completely different mindset. I mean, think about if you're Microsoft, you, you built the world's greatest infrastructure to compute, create, communicate, and collaborate, and now you're in a world where it's, I'm sorry, wrong order, communicate, well, we don't have any phones, collaborate, well, we don't have any social, you know, you know and finally you get to compute and create, but it's down the line. And Microsoft is just a single instance of our entire IT world. By the way, we built that whole world around Microsoft and Oracle, fundamentally, so, so you know, Th their, their fate is our fate, so it's a big deal. So we say, so, so if we look at this thing, so what? The so what here is, I showed a blue stack and a red stack, because I'm a stack guy, right? I mean, I, I was born with stacks, right? It, it's not a stack. It's not a stack. If you're serious about user-centered computing, if you're saying, honest to God, the way we have to think about computing now, at least for, for the, at the edge, is it starts with a user who communicates, collaborates, then computes and creates. If we start with that user, then that's the design center. So when we talk about user experience design, what that person who works for you does is the first thing they do is they staple themselves to the end user. It's called ethnographic research. Jane Goodall did it with chimpanzees, right? You, you go to their native habitat and you watch them, okay? And you, 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 you watch them, uh, it's really cute by the way, uh, IDEO is, is probably one of the leading design uh, experience uh, firms in, here in the Bay Area. And I was giving a, a talk to their team a while ago and this woman came up to me and she said, you won't remember me, but you were my first assignment. And I'm going, well, I better, I can, <laughs> she, she, you were at Regis McKenna, it was 1987, and my we were gonna introduce something around pen-based computing and my job was to find out how you used a pen. She said, you, you, you had a little, little uh, notebook and you had a mon blanc pen. And I said, you mean I had a little notebook and a mon blanc pen? <laughs> yeah, so, 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 so user-centric. But she, what she did is she followed me around for a day saying, how is he using the little notebook and the mon blanc pen so that when they designed the mobile product, they wanted to design it backwards from the experience. A little bit when, when Rob was playing the HR person as opposed to the other guy playing the IT guy. So Rob was playing the user-centric play. I don't care about that crap, I care about me. And then the first issue is, if we're having a user-centric architecture, the first arc of responsibility is actually the user's domain. So the user said, okay, I'm bringing my tablet or my uh, mobile to work. By the way, you didn't pay for this. I paid for this. This is mine. By the way, it's my identity. This is my device, it's my identity, it's my location. This is my stuff. You cannot use my stuff in ways that I don't approve, period. That's the, first, that's the first clause in the contract. Now you can say to me, Jeffrey, I need to have your location or you can't have this job in my company. And I can make a choice as to say, okay, but, I, but you cannot track my location without me knowing about it, that, that kind of stuff. So that's the first rule. And, and, and design starts there. The next rule is, okay, Jeff, we respect you, other half of the coin, you have to respect us. We have a bunch of assets out here beyond this ring. They're highly valuable. Some of them are, are under attack. So we have permissions and policies and groups and authentication and all that stuff. That's our layer. 
So, so those two layers are the layers in that middleware, that pa I call that path, that, that middle part of the stack. Those are the action layers for systems of engagement meeting systems of record. Once you can get through those layers, you get to the apps, there's cool apps. There's lots and lots of cool apps. And ServiceNow, you know, what was so cool about watching that, that, that demonstration was, you could think of a hundred apps that you could, with, by the way, you know, you, I know you can go light end to end all the way through and have it end up as an IT project. Man, I was, at the end of the second icon, I was ready to quit. It's like, just keep the system as it is, I don't care. I just would like to be able to get at it in, in, in a way that makes sense to me. So I mean, like those first two icons are huge. Okay, and, and that's the kind of thing that apps do. They, 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 they're they're user-centric, and instead of saying, well, I put all the software in a box and you figure out how it goes together, they said, no, we took all the software apart into apps, and each app does something, and you, you know, put it on your desktop and use the app the way you want to. The tablet metaphor is fabulous. So that's great. And then everything after that, frankly, Rob said it. Great, I don't care. I don't care. God bless, you know, I need it, it's important, but, but no, it, it, not for user-centric computing. So, so, uh, so sitting, having the dialogue with the team, instead of thinking, because when we think about ServiceNow, think about where this thing came from. And, and by the way, I knew Fred at Peregrine, so, and I know the guys at BMC, and I know the guys at Computer Associates, and I know the guys at CompuWare. I mean, this stuff is hard to manage, right? The IT service management, it's always been a mare's nest. But, but what's happening now is when you turn it inside out, it becomes, I mean, the, 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 it's just a miracle. And, you, you, and Fred, I think, is gonna, is gonna go absolutely ballistic about this tomorrow. It just, it, it completely reinvents the enterprise because everything is a service. I mean, that's, that's the idea. Everything is a service. So if you have service infrastructure, yes, we built the service infrastructure for nerdly little things dealing with nerdly nasty little problems. But if you turn it the other way around, it's a service layer for the world. It's, and, and by the way, that's what Uber does, that's what Airbnb does, that's what OpenTable does. The, it's just service now turned the other way around. So, so the opportunity to impact your environment it, it, it is really, really cool. Now it's a new social contract. And, 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 and this is where I think the challenge of the change management, because we have people in our organizations who come from various age cohorts, I'm, trying to find some HR appropriate thing, you know, age cohorts. Uh, and, 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 and depending on which cohort you come from, you just have a very different mental paradigm. I don't know if you remember when we went from structured programming to object-oriented programming. And some people just, it was like, no, no. First of all, that's just a structured program with a different twist, right? And the, <clears throat> okay, well, the same, the same kind of problem. I mean, it's the paradigm shift. I mean, yeah, it's like the exorcist. <clears throat> I mean, you, you're, my head's spinning. But the key things are user first, mobile first. Really? That's n not schema first? No. Not desktop first? No. That was the big lesson, by the way. That was 70, uh, 2007, 2008. At some point, you know, Microsoft, Facebook, everybody figured out, oh, God, it's the tablet first. It's the tablet, dude. It's the tablet. It's the f and, and then the smartphone. So user first, mobile first. Second one, no more stupid stuff. I, my favorite example of this is, I'm on the board of a high tech company. Two weeks ago, I got a request to for sign a unanimous letter of consent. Great. It was attached to an email. I was asked to print out the request, sign it, fax it back, <laughs> so that they could scan it to put it back into a computer, right? That's what I mean by e docu sign, echo sign. It's that what, but that's stupid stuff. And basically what's happening is at some level, you, you, the, the, the next layer of talent will go, I can't work at a company where you do stupid stuff. Right? It's, it's stupid stuff. Um, third one is fully compliant, completely secure. We are, boy are we a long way from this. I mean, uh, the problem, uh, the word completely can never be used with the word secure. Right, I mean, just it, it's, it can't. I, I, we had a very interesting comment at lunch, which I really enjoyed. He, a fellow said, "I just try to create a a risk a cost risk curve, which says, okay, as I spend, I guess as I go, uh, how does it go? It's this way. I, if I spend more and more money, I can asymptotically reduce risk, but I can never get risk to to a hundred percent complete. I guess it probably maybe goes that way. 
But anyway, but, but th that's a big problem and, and, and complicates deferrals too. And then it's gotta integrate with the systems of record. We can't just say, look, we've got this collaborative environment where, where, where our systems are, are, are kind of in the back office. No, the, 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 what happens in the new value chain is the system of record actually starts the moment of engagement because the system of record produces an alert. Something, if, by the way, if the system's record is working, we could be golfing. What happens is the system of record at some point, the world and the system do not actually align. It always happens. So there's an alert. Okay, so there's an alert. So now what I have to do is I have to engage. That's when I want my system of engagement because the problem with that alert is, and the illusion, a little bit of the demo we saw today, the answer to the alert is not in the database. Now we said, well, we can go and chat, maybe. Chatting sometimes, I mean, you know, you can go on a, go to a social network. Yes, that helps. But, but it, that's only one system of engagement. Maybe I need to make a phone call. Maybe I need to text somebody. Maybe I need to you know, do, do a video conference with somebody. Maybe I have to pull three or four people together on a conference call. Whatever it is, I, I, I've got to get it going. And so those four have to work together to make the new world work. So last, last thing I want to close on. And then we have, we're going to have a few minutes, I think, to just, if your crap detector's been going off, just, you know, <laughs> just have at me in just a couple of seconds. Um, but there is an important thing, and it does relate a lot to, I think, the opportunity with ServiceNow. I think the biggest risk um, that ServiceNow and you have in front of you is that you may end up majoring in minors. That you may take this world-class opportunity and apply it to something that is too safe. Too safe, majoring in minors. So here, here's, here's my way to avoid that. I, I think you wanna have a conversation with your line of business colleagues and you start with, hey, I was at this speech that this Moore guy gave and he said, every market-facing strategy is made or broken during a handful of moments of engagement. This is kind of like the zero out moment of truth kind of thing of the first moment of truth of Procter & Gamble. SAS used to say that. Every time a customer steps up to our counter, it's a, it's a defining strategic moment for our company. So the question is, what are our, what are our moments of engagement? Right? If it's Google, it's, it's literally, you hit the search button, whatever comes back, that was, that's their defining moment of engagement. If it's Goldman Sachs, it's did they get, your, did they get the, 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 the right to, to be on the left-hand side of your IPO document? If it's, if it's a doctor, it's the, it may be the diagnosis. Another critical moment of engagement is did the patient take the pill? Turns out to be a critical moment of engagement in, in, in therapy because many patients don't take the pill. Right? So, so what are the moments of engagement? Every business, I'm going to claim, has critical moments of engagement. And the first question I think you want to just set the table with, you probably already know them, you probably just want to confirm them with your colleagues, is what are ours? Then the next question is, who represents us in that moment of engagement? In the medicine example, in the first, in the diagnosis, the doctor represents us. We're very clear about that, and we're actually quite good about giving doctors lots and lots of support for that moment of engagement. In the second moment of engagement, when the patient takes the pill, we are not present. And we provide the patient nothing to help them. In fact, we provide the patient with incentives not to buy medicine, okay? So, so, so you can kind of see, wow, we have a horrible moment of engagement exposure problem, and particularly with psychotropic drugs when people have mental disorders, they are mentally stimulated not to take the stuff because, because of the, the way that the ke brain chemistry is working. So there's a company called Proteus who says, well, you know, you could put a tiny, 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 tiny little chip inside every pill, and, 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 and the sensor would know when you took the pill, and we, and we can confirm, and th those are the kind of ideas. That's a very far out idea, but that would be a way of investing in that moment of engagement. So who represents us in this moment of engagement? How impactful are you in supporting their collaborative efforts? And where could we introduce systems of engagement capabilities to amplify your organization's power at this specific moment? Now, I can have this conversation with the HR organization, and I think I should, and facilities and finance, but you know, I want to make sure it's a moment that matters. You know, I, I just, I don't want to make, I mean, you know, the danger with this whole thing is that we're going to end up making cost centers more productive, which is a good thing, but it's not, that's not the thing. The thing is to reorchestrate the nature of business under a services oriented model. That's the thing. That's the, that's the thing at least that gets me up in the morning and it's, I think it gets Fred up in the morning. So, so, so tr trying to say, wow, what could we do with this that would re-architect or re-engineer a moment that matters? That's my challenge to, to, to do. 
to you. And so it ends up, this is the last slide, it ends up being a little bit of a resource allocation business because you look at all this stuff, you cannot divorce yourself from the responsibility of the blue. You can, and I think many of you are, creatively working with third parties to say, can I give more and more of that blue stuff to the people who are the consolidation leaders of the blue stack? HP, IBM, Dell, no, could, could you guys, could, the blue stuff, SAP, Oracle, could, could you guys kind of take that? Because I, I do want to spend more time on the red stuff, but at the margin, who are we kidding? I mean, we've modified these systems a lot, you know, there, there's just a lot of stuff. So, so figuring out how far you can go down that one, and so what I, what I want to, is I, and however far you can go to the red, your users will light up, uh, your challenges will also light up. Your alert boards will probably also light up. Um, so it's expensive to go to the red. But, but, but the good news is the money is there. If you, if you show that the money is going to the red, my claim is your end users and, 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 and the whole community will say, yes, please spend our IT dollars on that side of the, of the thing as much as you can. I get that we have to spend them on this side too. But what they hate to hear, and they, they've heard this from us all our lives, is 85% of my budget is stuck on the blue side. What's your question? And, and their question is, well, why can't it be 80% and then 75% and, and why not? Be, and and, and it, the truth is, you know what? It can be. It can, and, and we, 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 but part of it is we, we need to figure out on the red side, we got to do stuff that creates enough visibility and return that people go, wow, I want some more, wow. So how do I help you get do more of that? That's, that's what I want to do. That's, wh that's where I want to go. Okay, well, that's what I wanted to share with you. Uh, th those are sort of uh, my slides. By the way, the slides will be available. So first of all, thank you very much for listening to that. That was, that was very kind. Thank you. Yes, you can dab on it.